Hello everybody. Uh, so in today's video I thought that I would take you guys along with me while I make dinner. So I'm, let me show you. <laughs> I have my mixer ready here. I just heated up some milk and we are going to make some dinner rolls to go along with the soup that I'm making. It is a cold rainy day outside so I decided to make some homemade dinner rolls and we're gonna make a sausage tortellini vegetable soup so for the dinner rolls it says I needed one and a half cups of warm milk so we're gonna pour that in this recipe is a little different from some of my other recipes for bread that I've made this one it calls for everything together you don't have to do the yeast first which is really weird but we're gonna make it how it shows <laughs> okay so I put the one and a half cups of warm milk to make sure it's not too warm otherwise it will affect the yeast then it calls for a third of a cup of sugar quite a bit of sugar and two tablespoons of instant yeast so rapid rise yeast in some some people two tablespoons i just thought it was very weird that the milk the sugar all of that plus the flour <laughs> everything gets put in it all at the same time that's really weird is what it is Okay, one teaspoon of salt. Uh, six tablespoons of butter. I have some butter here. I'm gonna do this roughly. <laughs> I usually do, but. Today is raining and just gross, dreary fall day. <laughs> um, butter, oh, egg. We need one egg. I just want to make sure I'm supposed to put the egg in right now. Yes. Okay. That I wanted to make sure because the milk is warm. So I'm going to mix this and then we have to add the flour too. Let me use my spoon here. I'm just going to mix up the yeast a little better. Just so it proofs nice. Okay. Now we need to add the flour. We need four to five cups of flour, it says. I just filled my flour container. <laughs> like I was saying, this recipe, you don't have to proof the, the yeast first. It proofs it all together. Two. We're going to start with four. Three. Four. Mix that together. Okay, so I'm just going to check the recipe here. Just to see how long this needs to knead after it's all put together. 
it says to after it's all combined to knead for two minutes straight. Okay, I see that there's some st stuck on the sides here, so I'm just gonna scrape it. Make sure everything gets evenly coated here. And then this looks really sticky still, so we're going to add another cup. We want it to be like a really nice bread texture. Just like normal bread, so we can mix it into or uh, shape it into rolls, basically. Okay, so I'm gonna let this mix for about two minutes. It's almost there. Well, wait a sec here. I want it to be completely combined first before I mix it for the two minutes. There's some stuff on the bottom here. lots of flour and stuff still. Okay. Okay. So now I'm going to leave this mix and, and incorporate completely. I'm going to let this mix for two minutes. Once that's done, I'll come back and show you what it looks like. Okay, so this has been mixing for a couple minutes now. Looks pretty incorporated. It's not too sticky. I'm just going to take this off the hook here. Okay. So, I'm going to pour a little bit of olive oil in the bowl here. Just so it doesn't stick. Nothing worse than dough sticking to the sides of your bowl. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to cover this and let this sit. It says to let it raise for 30 minutes. Then we're going to take it out, shape it into, into buns, and then we're going to let it raise for another 30 minutes. So while we're waiting for this to raise, let's get started on the soup. So I'm just going to start grinding or grinding uh cooking up some sausage here some ground sausage this is ground italian sausage mild because we don't like it too spicy so i'm just gonna open the package here So, I have a funny thing about sausage. Um, all growing up, I actually hated sausage, like with a passion. I have a few childhood stories that he might find funny. Um, but I grew up quite poor, so I thought sausage was those breakfast sausages that are like a, a pale grayish pink color. <laughs> and I loathe those sausages, they're disgusting. And so my whole life, I thought that's what sausage was. And as I've grown up and with my fiance and his family, I have discovered that there's many, many, many different kinds of sausage. <laughs> I just didn't know that before. And um, I find that I actually really like Italian sausage. There's quite a few other kinds of sausage that I like as well. So. I've been broadening my horizons. <laughs> so the base of this soup is Italian sausage. Mild, of course. You can do, if you want it hot, that's fine. So I'm just going to brown that up. I'm going to get some garlic here in a sec, and we're going to put some garlic in this. Okay, let's pull out some. I have, this is my pull-out freezer. <laughs> I have so much stuff and everything. Okay. So, 
I have some frozen peppers. We're going to use some of those. Um, where's my onions? Frozen onions. We're going to use those. Let's see what other vegetables we have. This is one of the reasons why I like freezing some of my vegetables that I that I get out of the garden. Uh, this is from last year. Zucchini. Let's use that. My family's not a huge fan, but hopefully I can hide it. <laughs> Let's see what else. More zucchini. Oh, we have green beans. Let's use some of those. What's this? Bok choy. No, we don't use that. Mm. Some of my garlic pucks. What did I do with the kale? Oh, there it is. Okay, let's so let's put some of that in there too. Okay, I got all the vegetables we just looked at. I need to stir my my stuff here. I'm just breaking it up. So I think I'm going to add the flour in now, just a little bit, I'm just going to mix it together. Okay. I like the soup to have like a, like a, not a thick texture, but like not runny, if that makes sense. Okay. So we're going to add some garlic. Sometimes when I cook, I don't always follow a recipe. And this is one of those that I don't follow a recipe. <laughs> okay, so let's put some peppers in. Oh, I didn't shut my fridge. Okay, let's turn this down so it doesn't burn. Put some of the onions in. We like onions. <laughs> Put lots of those in. Okay, I'm going to add some chicken stock just because I don't want this to get too thick with the with the flour. If you guys have noticed, I've been using bought and chicken stock. The reason is because we're getting ready to move. And I stupidly packed all my homemade chicken stock like three weeks ago. <laughs> I thought I wasn't going to need it. We were going to end up moving um, a month earlier, but that didn't happen. So <laughs> I ended up packing things that I needed. There we go. That's a little better. So we're going to let that simmer. And then let's add some of the other stuff. Kale. I don't want to add too much of this, just a handful. For some nutrition, basically. <laughs> what is this? I think this is kale too. Yeah. Uh, green beans. There we go. Some green beans. Let's, we might not use all of this because they might notice if I use all of this, <laughs> but we're going to try and hide some of this zucchini in the soup here. That's why I like to dice it really small because then they don't notice. Okay, this other one I'm going to put in a ziplock and we'll use it in a different soup. Okay, I'm going to let that simmer for a couple minutes and then we'll finish a couple other portions to this. Okay, so while I was waiting for some of this to simmer a little bit, I cut up a couple, few carrots and a couple yellow gold potatoes. 
I'm going to put those in here too. I want this to be quite a hearty soup. Filling. <laughs> so this is, uh, I'm not sure if I mentioned in the beginning of the video, this is a um, sausage vegetable tortellini soup. Okay. So I'm going to go get one more of the ingredients. And then we will... I'll show you what this looks like actually before I do that. Look how nice and colorful that is. All the vegetables and the nutrients. It's going to be delicious. Okay, I'm going to go get the other ingredient. Okay, so the other ingredients were... One second. The other ingredients were my homemade salsa. I packed all my tomatoes, so I figured this would work great. And then, pasta sauce. Uh, I have a couple cans left of the bought and stuff, so I'm going to try to use that. Before I use the homemade stuff we made together. So I'm going to mix that around. I'm going to let it simmer for a couple minutes and then we're going to add some seasonings and maybe some more chicken stock. thought I would give you a closer look on what the soup looks like. As you can see it's got this nice creamier thicker texture but not too thick. That's why I put the flour in. Okay. Okay so I'm going to add some pepper. good amount here. I don't want it to be bland. We're going to add a little bit of salt. Vegetables can be quite bland. And I'm going to get about a tablespoon of sugar to offset some of the tomato flavor. Tomatoes can be quite tart so I like to have balanced flavor. But you don't want it to be sweet either especially with this being a savory dish. Okay, so I'm going to add a little bit more chicken stock. I miss my chicken stock. It tastes so much better. <laughs> and then this is going to thicken up again a little bit more from the flour. Okay, I'm going to go get a spoon and we're going to taste this. Okay, let's see the flavors here. I know not all the vegetables are cooked, that's okay. It needs a few things. A little bit more pepper. A little bit more salt. Let's put some garlic powder in. And then I think I'm going to add one more thing. To give it a little bit more dimension. Um, I'm going to put some of this better than boolean vegetable boolean in here. I think that'll give it the kick I'm looking for. This tends to enhance a lot of vegetable dishes. If I was using my homemade chicken stock, I probably wouldn't add that, but this botanist chicken stock doesn't have as much flavor, <laughs> so I need to enhance it a little bit. Okay, let's let that simmer for a little bit. We'll wait for our bread. Getting there. A little bit longer. Let's wait probably five or ten more minutes, and then we'll put those into buns. But for now I'm going to let this simmer while we're waiting. So when I come back we're going to put the uh, shape the buns. Okay so I bought this big huge pack 
of tortellini from Costco. Big, huge one. I like to freeze them and put them in um, Ziplocs and then just take handfuls out for soup and stuff whenever I need them or pasta even. So the soup is looking nice. I don't want to add the tortellini until the buns go in the oven. So let's look at the dough. Oh, it's ready. <laughs> so let's go form these into buns so we can get them in the oven. Okay, so as you can see, it's more than doubled. I just sprayed one of my baking pans here. Okay, so let's take this right out. So how I usually get some of the oil on my hands here. <laughs> so how I've always been taught is to make it flat like this. I know people have been taught all different ways, but this is how I've been taught. And then you push up and you squeeze it off. That's how I've always been taught how to make rolls. <laughs> so I'm going to do that and then we can get these in the oven. Well, actually, we need to raise these one more time. Almost forgot. <laughs> we need to raise these for another 30 minutes after this. I am leaving them some space here so that... I don't know if you can see that. There we go. So that they have room to, to raise. <laughs> I know some people like to roll their, their buns on the counter, which is totally okay. Each to their own. <laughs> this is just how my mother and my grandmother liked to do it. So I do it the same as they do. Like that. In my opinion, whatever works best is what's best. <laughs> Not just that, but I like to see how people do things differently. Sometimes, sometimes you'll notice that uh, you'll find a different method that works better than the way you're used to and it's, it's good to be open to to new techniques and new ideas we are going to put an egg wash on the top of these This dough is nice and soft. I have actually never made this recipe before, so we're making it for the first time together. I usually make a different dinner roll recipe, but I wanted to try this one. Just looked interesting to me that it all goes into the bowl at once. I thought that was interesting. So I think this is going to make exactly 12. Let's see here. Maybe, maybe not quite. little baby one. Let me take a little bit off of this one. This one's kind of big. Maybe a little bit off of this one. There we go. Just make them a little bit more uniform. I think I'm just going to pinch this one together so I can use all the dough. There we go. It's pretty close in size. So I'm going to let these raise for another 30 minutes and then we're going to stick them in the oven. Okay, so it's been a little over 30 minutes. Oh, those raised quite a bit, didn't they? <laughs> okay, so we're going to put these in the oven for, it said around, let me look here. What did it say? <laughs> it said 12 to 15 minutes on 375. But my oven runs a little hot, so I have it on 350. So I'm going to do it for 
15 to 20 minutes. So let's put these in the oven. Okay, so while the buns are uh, cooking, oh, I should actually set a timer. <laughs> I'm really bad for doing multiple things at once and then burning things. <laughs> so let's do it for 18 and we'll check them. It says in the recipe to cook them until golden brown. Okay, so let's add the... The... Tortellini. Um, I bagged all the tortellini so I could put them in the freezer. I literally just like taking handfuls and putting them in the soup. It's one of my favorite things to freeze. <laughs> I don't want to add too much because it'll take up too much of the broth in the soup. But enough to add a little bit of heartiness to the soup. I think that's good because these are going to expand as they cook. I'll give you a closer look at the soup here. So this is what it looks like. As these cook they're going to expand. It's going to be delicious. I did taste this again and with the vegetable bouillon it made it perfect. So as soon as the buns are done and this is done I'll show you the finished product. Okay guys so the uh, buns are out of the oven it actually they cooked for 18 minutes in my oven at 350. i can feel they're nice and soft and tender i'm just wiping some butter on the tops make them nice and soft this recipe is nice and soft to begin with the texture You could probably turn these into a garlic butter bun as well and just make like a mixture with garlic and butter. Same thing. The soup is also done. I just wanted to get the butter on so it can absorb into the buns. Okay. So. Get a bowl here. It's nice and hearty. It's nice. wipe the side of the bowl here I got it all over down the side <laughs> so this is what the soup looks like looks good now let's cut into one of the buns and see how how good they look in the metal they're nice and soft I can feel them oh my the texture is nice I can feel it pull apart that's really good Let's taste. Ooh, they're still hot. Mmm. I'll definitely be making these again. This is good. Mmm. Dang, that's really good. It's got like a nice balance between sweetie, sweet. It's not too sweet. I think the milk and the butter really helps. It's good. Hello, everybody. Uh, that's where I'm going to end the video today. It's time for dinner, so I'm going to go. So I'll see you in the next video. Bye.